Thank you for joining our Wednesday evening Bible study. Please stay tuned for some important announcements immediately following the service. Good evening, Westside Worldwide. Let me welcome you to our beautiful sanctuary. What a joy it is to join you on this Wednesday, January 6th in the year of our Lord, 2021. Again, I'm coming to you because we're going to enjoy a previously viewed program of our church. When you look around, you're able to see the pictures that fill in the spaces where you once sat. I want to encourage you to send us a new picture for the new year. If you're one of our viewers who watch us on Westside Worldwide, even if you're not a member of our congregation, send us your picture. We've got some space to put you up. I want to encourage you to be careful. I know this pandemic is horrible and it's difficult for us being apart, but we're so close to the end. And let me encourage you. Remember, if you can avoid crowds, avoid the crowds. Remember to wash your hands and practice social distancing. We're so close and we can't afford to lose anyone else. I want you to continue to be in prayer for members of our church family as they are dealing with deaths of loved ones in their own immediate family. But also be in prayer for the members of our church family who are dealing with this dreaded disease. Pray for their healing and their recovery. Tonight, you're going to be blessed you know, the Christian journey really isn't about ups and downs. It's about in and outs. In Philippians, the second chapter, Paul challenges us to work out what God has worked in us. I think you're going to be blessed. Remember, thank you for your faithful stewardship and the many ways you're able to give, either by texting, giving online, through the app, or mailing it here at the church. You'll get that information later in our broadcast. When we asunder part, it gives us inward pain, but we shall still be joined in heart and hope to meet again. I love you, Westside Worldwide. Be blessed. The song says this. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who. Come on, lift your hands if you believe that. Waymaker, waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the dark. My God, that is who you All over the building, come on, lift your hands and say, Waymaker, come on, Waymaker, sing it. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are.
worship you. You are Speak for no one else. 
But I tried it for myself. Hey, hey! Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. You know, I tell my people that, uh, I tell my friends all the time that my, my, my wife uh, cooks at some of the finest restaurants in town. <laughs> and uh, when, we, when we go there to eat, we'll ask them for recommendations. We'll say, oh, you ought to try this, or you ought to try this, or try that. And then you will say, now, now what have you tried? Uh -oh. And when they say, I really like the this, I, I, don't, I, don't need, I don't need everybody, but I need about 11 people real quick. I, I, I just need some folk who've tried it. So oh, yeah. 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 I know what Big Mama said, I know what Papa said, I know what my dear said, but I, I need somebody up in here. To say, I can tell you for myself, he'll, he'll come see about you when you're sick. I, I need somebody to say, I can tell you for myself, he still does pay bills. I, I, I need somebody over here to help me understand, he still can watch over your children when you pay Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Yes, and I'm being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith. I am glad and I rejoice with you all for the same reason you also be glad and rejoice with me. The grass withers, the flowers thereof faded away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to suggest that the Christian journey, thank you, ushers, for your faithfulness today, that the Christian journey is really less about ups and downs and it is more about ins and outs. I want to talk about today working out what God has worked in. Working out what God has worked in. In this story, we continue this love story between a pastor and a congregation. Remember, he's about 700 miles away in prison. A prison... Uh, term that's going to ultimately end in his death. Amen. He writes to this church and he's writing to them this letter about how it is that they as believers ought to act. In verse 12 he says this therefore. Now this therefore in verse 12 is a reflection back to chapter 1 verse 27 when he tells them to work together to be unified, to be in unity and in humility. The preceding verses, he tells them about the example that Christ has given, that he, uh, in, the, in the language, that ornate language of the King James, he thought it not robbery right. to be equal with God, or a better translation, he didn't see it as something he should cling to, but rather made himself of no reputation. And because he humbled himself to the death of the cross, God has given him the name. Yes. A name that is above every other name. Yes, sir. That at the name of Jesus, every knee. Every knee. And, and, and in case there's any question, he does this thing. He says all things in earth and below earth, heaven and earth, every knee is going to have to bow. And that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Yes. And because of the example that he has given us, and I'm exhorting you to be uh, unified and humble, he says here, I want you to work out what God has worked into you. Yeah. It's interesting here that Paul says this. He says to them, he says, now I'm away. And, and you know when the 
cats away, the mice will play. He, he says, oh, oh, you look like you don't believe me. I, I know none of you miss church when you know I'm going to be on vacation. <laughs> Pastor ain't going to be there today. I'm going to stream today. Come on, wink. You ain't got to wait. Just wink, me and you. Look. So he says, even in my absence, while I'm in jail, I want you to be committed to being unified. I want you to continue to work as a church. And this is what he says. He says about four things here, and I'm really excited about this. I, I want to read them to you real quickly. I'm, I'm working to try to get, get this, my sermons down to a certain time. So worship, I'll have you in and out when we go to our new schedule. So... Uh, so those members of ours who support things that happen around noon won't have to be skipping out. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Talking about emergencies came up. Yes, it did. That text from Jerry Jones. Don't look at me. I know. <laughs> Listen to what he says. He says four things real quick. You can write them with me. That if you're going to work out what God has worked in, the first thing he says is that God has given us a purpose to achieve. Yes, amen. It's in the text. This is perhaps the most misquoted verse in all of Scripture. It does not to say, it does not say to work out your soul salvation. Amen. That's not what it says. It says work out your own salvation. Right. Now, when this says salvation, it does not mean us being redeemed from the, from the grave and from sin like we think of Jesus has saved us. That's not what he's saying. The wording in the Greek here does not mean that you are working to be saved. Amen. The wording in the Greek literally means you are working because you are right. saved. Amen. The idea of the term salvation here in the Greek is that for everybody God saves, God has a set plan for your life. Amen. He says that because God has saved you, that God does not save anyone without purpose. That when God saves you, he loves you so much that he has a plan that is unique to you for you to do. And no one else can do the work that God has designed for you. The Christian team, and, and in most of our churches, we are the only team where players fight to sit on the sideline. <laughs> Preach Delvin at you, son. I, I, I mean, we fight. No, 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 Pastor, don't put me in the game. Don't, don't put me in the game. Paul says this. He says, he would say to the church at Thessalonica, he says, and that you study to be quiet and to do your own business. God has called every member of our church to a ministry. It is a ministry unique for you. It is not what someone else does. It is for you specifically, but God has called you to do it. And none of us can point at someone else and say they can do it because God did not design it for them. He designed it for you. Preach, Delvin, at you. I, I'm, I'm going to slip up and be a pastor this morning. Let, 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 me, let me raise this question because everything that is created has purpose and we major, we major in bragging about not fulfilling our purpose, i.e. an umbrella. Can you imagine an umbrella, having an umbrella and you have that umbrella and it's around the other umbrellas and it looks at the other umbrellas and says to the other umbrellas, now one thing about me, I ain't blocking no rain. <laughs> I don't even want nobody to open me when the sun, you think I'm gonna keep somebody in the shade? That's what umbrellas do. And yet I hear people in the church who tell me they can do stuff, they've seen what other folk do, and they criticize what other people do, and they say, but I ain't gonna do it, so I don't. Paul says it this way. He, he says right here, he says God has created us for purpose. Work, and he says it like this. He says with fear and trembling. This idea of fear and trembling is the idea that we almost, because he would use the term later, circumspectly. It, it is the, that the tightrope that we've got to stay balanced. He says we've got to work because God has designed us to work. What if every member what if every member of Westside Church was as committed or not as you are? Would this be a church that you want to attend? 
If every member of Westside gave the way you give, would you want to be a member of this church? If their attitude was, let somebody else do it. Now, you don't have to do it. Now, all of us can't sing. A amen. All of us can't teach. But we can do something. And whatever it is you do, you ought to find a way to do that for the kingdom. When I, when I was a boy starting in the fifth grade, starting in fifth grade, I wanted to be an attorney. I would watch Perry Mason, and um, we didn't have Johnny Cochran. Um, I, I wanted to be an attorney. When I was in the 11th grade, I knew that the Lord was calling me to preach. And as I struggled with what God was calling me to do, here is what I decided in my mind, that, is that since I could not be the attorney I wanted to be, I made up in my mind I was going to be the Lord's lawyer that I would be God's attorney. When you hear me preach, I am arguing a case before a jury, a congregation of a jury, so that what God has called me to do, I want to do it for his glory. Where, where do you plug in in your church? What, 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 has, what has God called you to do? And what is most troubling is that we often misidentify who's going to judge us. Because we will say, I'm not going to do it, so they can't say nothing about me up there. But do you know what I say about you, won't matter? You've got to stand before God. He says each of us has a purpose to achieve. But then he says in the text, I'm not even making it up. You can walk along with me. He said, as God is working in us both to do and to pleasure. Because, watch what he says, it is God who works in you. We've got a purpose to achieve, but we've got a power to receive. Amen. It's, it's in the text. He says, now here's, here's what I like about God. That God does not work through us until he works in us. And what God has called us to do, he has not called us to do it alone. I, I hear you saying, Pastor, I would do it, but I don't know how to do it. I, I don't. How many of times have you been ready to share your faith and you got nervous? How, you said, well, what if I don't know all the answers? And that would be good if you had to do it by yourself. But what the text says is that God is working in me. And, and here, here is my shout. I'll shout all by myself. It, it is that oftentimes what's going on inside of me can be, can be detected on the outside of me because God is working in you. And when God starts working in you, God will work through you. And the longer you spend with him, that's why you need to be in somebody's Sunday school class. That's why you need to be in a Bible study. That's why you need to attend worship regularly so that you can get more of the word in you. Now, I don't need everybody, but I ought to have about 12 people in this congregation who will help me testify that the more of his words you heard, the bolder you got. And you start saying some stuff, and you didn't even know you could say it. I mean, you just walked in the boldness because God is is working in you. And every one of us, if we are honest, could wear the sign under construction because God is still working in us. And we've got, God says, I've got a power that I want you to receive. And here is the exciting thing about the power of God is that God operates with quiet power. There's a lot of stuff that makes a lot of noise, but God knows how to use quiet power. Well, just this morning, do you know how much water the sun, that sunbeams lifted. The way we get rain is that the sun evaporates the ocean. It goes back up. I mean moving millions of pounds. That rain will cause electricity to happen in our houses. But this morning that same sun fell on a baby's face and didn't even wake the baby up. That's the kind of power we have. God says that I'm, I've got some power I'm putting in you. The power that shook the house at Pentecost that's the power God has in you. You've got that kind of power. And so when when the enemy looks at you and tells you you can't do it, you can tell him, I didn't come up here by myself. I've got some power in here. Anybody here know he got power? Power to make you walk right. Power. Power to make you love folk that you wouldn't even fool with otherwise. Power. Power to make you hold your tongue when you want to tell somebody a power. Oh. 
Now, I, 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 I used to watch the Super Bowl, but, but I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan, so I had no reason to watch it. <laughs> I got one this year, though, y'all. <laughs> Cowboy fans, I love. Well, let me tell you why I watch it now. I watch it now for the commercials, right? And, and one of my favorite commercials is almost 10, 15 years ago was, was a, the Budweiser commercial. Now, because you are Baptist, I need to tell you, Budweiser is this company that makes beer. <laughs> I, I know you don't know, amen, amen. But, but they make, they make, and, and, and oh, so, and uh, they're known for their Clydesdales. And they had this commercial with this Clydesdale where he's pulling, he's trying to pull this big old heavy wagon, but it's that little old baby Clydesdale. And they show you with him getting hooked up to the harness. He's pulling, and you look, and this Clydesdale is pulling this big old wagon hooked to the harness. Little old bitty like midget Clydesdale. And when they shoot back, there are these big Clydesdales behind. And they are behind the wagon pushing. But if you look at him, you don't understand he's got a power. Yeah. That can't be yeah, yeah. He says God is working in us both to do and to will his good pleasure. That God says you got some power you don't even know about. That when they look at you, you need to tell them, I'm not here by myself. I've got some power that you can't see. I can move stuff that I didn't understand. Tell me, how is it that you can do it? I'm glad you asked. I've got something within me. That holdeth the reins, something within me I cannot explain. Something within me that banishes all pain. I don't know, it's just something within. He says we've got a purpose to achieve. He says we've got a power to receive. But then he said there are some pressures to relieve. It's in the text. I'm not even making it up. He says, do all this without murmuring. This, now, 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 that's an interesting word in the Greek. Um, what, what's the term? Th there's an English word. Do you, does anyone know what the term onomatopoeia is? It's a word that sounds like, like bam. In the Greek, this word, the word for murmuring is really a, an onomatopoeic word. It, 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 it means chatter, just, just knowing. He says to the church at Philippi, just wash the mess. Now, it's not big disputes. It's just, just chatter, knowing, claiming. As a matter of fact, when the deacons were formed in Acts, it was to stop murmuring. He says a word about the destructive nature of just talking too much. That's why I would say in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 11 and that you study to be quiet. He says that chatter, just talk. And I've discovered this, folk who talk a lot don't do a lot of work. Dr. Bill Lawson tells the story of going to get a lady who, who was a member of their church. She led the music at their church. And he said when he was a young man, he drove his father's truck. He said his father had an old truck. And he said that he, he, was, he was driving his dad's truck. And his, his dad's truck was just, he was driving his older truck. It was squeaking and clanging and clanging and clanging and going to get, it had some pretty rough roads. And, and Dr. Dr. Bill said when he went to this lady's house, uh, she was, she, she, she was a, a, a rather large woman. And, and Dr. Lawson said when he went to the house, he understood why. He said she had about four plates in front of her. And uh, she, was, she was a rather full, gravitationally challenged. Uh, he said, and he said, uh, ma'am, my, my dad told me to come get you. He said she got in the car. And he said they had gone about three miles when it dawned on him that the truck wasn't making any noise. 
that the weight of the woman had silenced the truck. Now before you laugh at her, it may be that if we get weightier, we make less. All right. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Because people who can always criticize what everyone else, what everyone else is doing, if you can always criticize well. what they are doing, may be an indication that you are not busy enough. My Lord. My Lord. People who, who, who have time always to be, people who got time to stop so you can pat them on the back who ask you to pat them on the back. When folk are really working, they don't ask you to stop to call their name because they're trying to get their job done. He says our job in the text, I'm not making it up, he says is we are to do it without disputes and without murmuring. He says that there are some things that are not big enough for us to argue over. And Paul says this to that church. He says that our witness is affected by chatter. Now, I grew up in a house where my mother would tell you this. What happens at the house, somebody here, know, somebody here was raised by one of my mama's cousins. I heard you say it. You don't put family business out in the street. It, 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 it is a shame before God that for you to walk out of the church and what happened at the church, you hear about it at the barber shop or at the, y'all ain't gonna help me. Folk who don't go to your church knowing your business. He says that affects your witness. He says we are to be blameless in this world. This world needs light. And if there's one thing that the country doesn't need, it is somebody else who just talks foolishness. We got a foolish talker in charge. So we don't need, y'all ain't gonna help me. We, we, we need some hope. Watch what he says about relieving pressure. Anybody who's ever flown, you know, have you ever been on a flight and you know your ears pop? It is because the higher you get, the more pressure there is from the outside. And the way they stop flights from planes from crumbling, from crushing you, from literally destroying what's inside, is that there's some pressure on the inside that's pushing out. Now, if the pressure on the outside is pushing in and the pressure on the inside, it will kill everybody on board. And what I've discovered is that the higher you get, the more pressure is on it. I want us to soar, but I need some folk who say, can't be that kind of pressure in here. We're going to push it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, I've given you some pressures to relieve. He says, what I've called you to do is to learn how to live peaceably with people. I've, I've, learned, I've called you to learn how to be like a grown-up. We just started, many of you just started back school, and you had to get school supplies. And you know, I remember when I was in grades one through six, I, I remember my big, my big goal, this is just me, I know not you, was to get to 64 box of crayon. No, no, no. Because if you got the 64 box, that was like the lifesaver book at Christmas. Y'all were balling. Y'all were good. Because they didn't have sepia and amber. I found out I was amber when I got to come. I don't call that time telling me I was black. No, I'm amber. It's come on, anybody? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Come on. Sixth grade, you got that 64 box. Your family got money. But when I went to junior high, when I went to junior high, they didn't put crayons on the list. When I went to junior high, I didn't want crayons because I wasn't a child anymore. I put away childish things. It bothers me when we grow up and still want to play with crayons. He said, you got to learn how to grow up. Stuff that used to get y'all not get us anymore. He gave us some pressures to relieve. I'm out of here. I told you I wanted to be finishing. And he says, he says, he says that you've got a purpose to achieve. He says there's a power to receive. He said there's some pressures to relieve. But then he says there's a promise to believe. He says you, you, you right, right here in the text. He, he said, Paul says, now listen. He, he, the, this, 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 is a, this is a weighty matter for Paul. Paul is facing his own death. He says, I, 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 all I've got in the world is God's promises. 
Paul, something had happened with Paul, we don't know. We, we think Paul was married because he writes with such insight about marriage. As a matter of fact, to be on the Sanhedrin, one would have to be married. But we think that his family had abandoned him when he decided to become a Christian. He had been deserted by his Jewish background. We'll discover that when we get to chapter 3. Here he is, and he says to this church that my life is being poured out now. As a sacrifice, this idea that, that when they were coming to the temple, they would burn the sacrificial offering. And, and, and he says that, that my life is being poured over your service, and, and I'm rejoicing in that. He says, the one thing I don't want to do is to get to the end zone, have the referee say, you stepped out of bounds. You stepped out of bounds and your labor was in vain. He says, I don't want my labor to be in vain. I don't want my work to be in vain. And the only thing Paul has, and he says to us, is that we hold fast to the word of life so that we may rejoice in the day of Christ Jesus. That's kind of where I want to get off this little train. I want to dump my wagon right there when I tell you God did not give me a guarantee, but he did give me a promise. Yeah. And in this Bible, there are over 8,800 promises. In the New Testament alone, there are about 1,143 promises. And I need to tell you that whenever life gets you to the point when you want to quit, pick up your promise. We just got through bragging about him being a promise keeper. Yeah. Yeah. That when life gets me to the point when I feel like no one is with me, I pick up a promise and it says, I will never leave thee, nor will I forsake thee. I am with you always. When life gets me in those difficult places where I wonder if what I'm doing matters, if, if I will have a reason to keep on keeping on, I pick up a promise that says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. When I get to the point when I feel like I'm all by myself and, and I, I'm just here and ain't nowhere in the world I can fight this battle of life by myself, I pick up this promise and if I be with you, I am more than the world against you. Whenever I wonder if what my life matters about, my own salvation, I'm not good enough, I messed up too many times, I pick up this promise that says, whosoever shall or they, they, they shall be saved. When I mess up, and I, I know you don't mess up, I, I can look at you and tell you don't mess up, but I, I wish I had somebody in here who knows what it's like to mess up, and when you mess up and you think nobody else wants to fool with you, I pick up a promise that says if I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. When I stay up all night crying and I'm wondering if it's going to be all right, I pick up a promise that says weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Whenever my friends turn and walk away and even loved ones don't understand, I, I pick up a promise that says he is a friend that stick it closer than a brother. And every now and then, when, when the weight of the world is on my shoulders, I pick up a promise that says, cast your cares on him because he cares for you. And when I feel like this is all that there is, I pick up a promise that reminds me that this world is not my home. And I need, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need to tell somebody that on this day when I'm celebrating my birthday, that I've got a promise that is better than my birthday because I've got another birthday that I've come to celebrate because they came looking for a star and they found the boy that was wrapped in swaddling clothing 
can I celebrate his birthday? I want to celebrate him that he lived 30 years without sin and he started to preaching. He preached for three and a half years, but I've got a promise. He died one Friday evening, but I'm so glad that I heard him make a promise uh, that said if you kill this body uh, three days later uh, I'm going to raise it up again uh, anybody here know he kept his promise uh, early on Sunday morning uh, he got up uh, with all power in his hands uh, but I've got another promise uh, one of these days uh, he's coming back uh, is there anybody here no he's coming back uh, soon one morning uh, he's gonna split the sky uh, and when he comes back uh, every day uh, is gonna be like Sunday uh, anybody here that know my Jesus ain't he alright I said ain't he alright ain't he alright ain't he alright Can I just have one? I know he's all right. Like birthday licks, can I get one to grow on? I Anybody, any, any, anybody here tried him? Won't he walk with you? Won't he talk with you? Won't he make a way out of no way? I want to work out what God has worked in. So that all glory and honor would be due to him. We can be as great a church as we want to be. But what are you doing to contribute to our greatness? I pray that this message spoke to your heart. And if it did, I want to invite you into a covenant relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus is waiting to come into your life so that you can work out what he works in. If you're interested in joining our church, if you're interested in prayer, or if you need counseling, following this invitation, there are gonna be some numbers that you can call or text, and we'll reach out to you. If you're interested in joining, go online at wbcchurch.org forward slash join, and we'll call you, we'll email you, we'll text you, We'll do whatever it takes to get you in a relationship with Jesus. Please continue to support our ministry online through our website, the WBC app, or you can drop your offering off at the church Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. or Sunday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m.
blessed and safe week, and we will see you Sunday morning on Facebook, YouTube, wbcchurch.org, or the WBC mobile app.